Horror night, whispers in the woods. The crisp October air hung heavy with the scent of decaying leaves and unspoken dread. A full moon, fat and luminous, cast an eerie glow over the ramshackle cabin nestled deep within the Blackwood Forest. Inside, huddled around a crackling fireplace, sat four friends. Maya, the adventurous one with eyes that held the glint of a thrill-seeker. Liam, the logical skeptic with a dry wit. Chloe, the artist with a penchant for the macabre. And Ethan, the quiet observer with a past shrouded in mystery. Tonight was Horror Night, an annual tradition where they'd test their courage with campfire stories and spooky dares. This year, the setting couldn't be more perfect or terrifying. The Blackwood Forest held a dark reputation, a place whispered to be haunted by the restless spirits of a forgotten mining disaster. Liam, ever the pragmatist, scoffed. Ghost stories? We're adults now, come on. Maya, ever the instigator, grinned wickedly. Lighten up, Liam. It's all in good fun, until it's not. Chloe, already sketching a scene of skeletal figures in her notebook, chuckled. Don't worry, Liam. I'll capture your fear on paper for posterity. Ethan, his gaze flickering to the darkened window, remained silent. As the fire crackled, Maya regaled them with a chilling tale of a vengeful miner trapped forever within the forest's depths. Liam, predictably, provided a scientific explanation for every spooky detail. Chloe, inspired by the story, added her own macabre flourishes. As the night deepened, the shadows outside seemed to grow bolder. A low moan, almost inaudible, drifted through the cracked window panes. Liam scoffed, attributing it to the wind. Then, Ethan spoke, his voice barely a whisper. My grandfather used to tell stories about this place, about a ritual performed on a night of the full moon that could summon the restless spirits. A hush fell over the group. Chloe shivered, her artistic muse replaced by a cold prickle of fear. Don't be ridiculous, Ethan, Liam said, but his voice lacked conviction. Maya, eyes gleaming with mischief, picked up a dusty book she'd found in a corner of the cabin. Its leather cover felt cold in her touch. Actually, Ethan's right. There are legends. She flipped through the book, its pages brittle with age. Then, with a gasp, she pointed to a faded inscription. It detailed the ritual, a series of cryptic symbols and chants designed to open a doorway between the living and the dead. A tense silence followed. The moan from outside seemed to grow stronger, accompanied by a scratching sound at the cabin door. You guys, Chloe whispered, her voice trembling. Maybe we should just call it a night? Liam looked around, his bravado faltering for the first time. The cabin felt suffocatingly small, the shadows dancing with an unsettling life of their own. Fine, Maya conceded, a flicker of doubt replacing her usual excitement. But just as she started to close the book, a gust of wind slammed the door shut. The cabin plunged into darkness. Panic surged through them. Screeching sounds erupted from outside, like the tormented wails of damned souls. Chloe screamed, a high-pitched shriek that sent shivers down everyone's spine. Ethan, surprisingly, was the first to act. He fumbled for a lighter and ignited a stray log, casting a flickering glow around the room. In the dim light, they saw the book lying open on the floor, a page turned to reveal the ritual in all its horrifying detail. We have to get out of here, Liam yelled, his voice choked with fear. But as they reached for the door, it creaked open slowly, revealing a figure shrouded in darkness. Its eyes, two malevolent red orbs, glinted in the firelight. It let out a guttural growl, a sound that sent a primal fear coursing through their veins. Trapped, their fear turned to desperation. Maya, remembering the ritual, grabbed the book. Maybe if we can perform the reversal, she stammered. We can close the doorway. Hope, tinged with desperation, flickered in their eyes. Ethan, his voice steady despite the terror, started translating the ancient runes. Liam, surprisingly, helped his scientific background, allowing him to decipher some of the symbols. Chloe, fueled by a sudden surge of adrenaline, grabbed a charcoal stick from the fireplace and began drawing the reversal symbols on the wall, 
mimicking the crude sketches in the book. The chanting began, a desperate chorus against the backdrop of unearthly wails and the rhythmic pounding against the cabin door. Maya stumbled through the archaic words, fear constricting her throat. Liam, surprising her, picked up the rhythm, his voice surprisingly firm. Ethan, his eyes closed, muttered the translations in a low, steady drone. Chloe, her hands trembling, finished drawing the reversal symbols. They were crude renditions of the ancient runes, but it was the best she could manage under the flickering light and mounting terror. As they chanted, a wave of icy energy swept through the room. The temperature plummeted and the fire sputtered, the flames dancing erratically. The figure at the door, its form solidifying into a skeletal monstrosity with tattered clothes and glowing red eyes, let out a deafening roar. The chanting faltered, the air thick with a suffocating dread. Yet, they persevered, their voices growing stronger with each passing moment. The air crackled with a strange energy. The walls seemed to vibrate, and the floorboards groaned under an unseen pressure. Suddenly, Chloe's charcoal symbols flared to life, glowing with an ethereal light. The light pulsed, spreading across the room, engulfing the skeletal figure in its radiance. It shrieked, a sound that ripped through their very souls. With a final, earth-shattering scream, the figure dissolved into wisps of dark smoke that swirled towards the open doorway. The wind howled, forcing the smoke back, pulling it through the doorway with a sickening slurp. Then, with a deafening bang, the door slammed shut. Silence descended, thick and heavy. The fire sputtered, finally succumbing to the cold. The room was plunged into darkness. Exhausted and trembling, they stumbled towards each other, finding solace in the shared terror. After a long moment, Maya fumbled for a lighter and ignited another log. The flickering firelight revealed the wreckage around them, overturned furniture, scattered belongings, and the unsettling glow of the open book still lying on the floor. We did it, Liam finally whispered, his voice hoarse with relief. They stared at each other, the weight of the experience etched on their faces. Maya, usually the life of the party, looked pale and shaken. Even Chloe, who thrived on the macabre, seemed subdued. Ethan remained silent, his gaze fixed on the open book. Maybe Horror Night wasn't such a good idea, Liam admitted with a nervous laugh. No one disagreed, but as they huddled closer to the rekindled fire, a new realization dawned on them. They had faced their fear together, and in doing so, had forged a bond stronger than any they had known before. The following days were a blur of nervous laughter and anxious whispers. They couldn't shake the memory of the night, the terrifying presence they had barely contained. Ethan, usually withdrawn, became more open, sharing cryptic stories of his past, hinting at a connection to the dark forces they had encountered. Their escape, however, was not complete. The whispers had returned, faint at first, a chilling echo in the back of their minds. They spoke of unfinished business, of a darkness not fully banished. The whispers grew bolder with each passing day, revealing glimpses of a horrifying truth. The ritual they had performed had not only closed a doorway, but had inadvertently opened another, a deeper connection to a malevolent entity that sought to use them as a bridge back to the mortal realm. Driven by a shared responsibility and a growing sense of dread, they decided to return to the Blackwood Forest. This time, they sought not to challenge the darkness, but to understand it. They delved into the history of the mining disaster, their research leading them to a hidden chamber deep within the forest, a place where the miners had performed a forbidden ritual to appease a malevolent entity for riches. The chamber, a dark and reeking cavern, held the key to their predicament. Ancient symbols adorned the walls, eerily similar to the ones they had used to perform the reversal ritual. In the center of the chamber, a sacrificial altar lay stained with the blood of long-dead miners. As they explored, the whispers in their heads intensified, urging them to complete the ritual. A terrifying realization dawned on them. The ritual they had performed, the one they thought saved them, was only the first step. Now, they were compelled to complete the second, a ritual that would bind them to the entity and unleash its wrath upon the world. 
Their quest for answers had unwittingly become a fight for survival. They needed a way to sever the connection, not just close another doorway, but to undo the original ritual performed by the miners. This time, their research led them to a reclusive order of mystics, hidden in the remote mountains. The mystics, wary of the friend's predicament, regarded them with ancient, knowing eyes. They spoke of a ritual, a counter-invocation that could sever the connection, but at a terrible cost. It demanded the sacrifice of a vital memory, a core belief, something that defined who they were. Dismay rippled through the group. Memories were their lifeblood, their personal stories woven into the fabric of their friendship. Could they truly give up a part of themselves to vanquish the darkness? Ethan, though, surprised them. He stepped forward, his voice resolute. I'll do it. His past was a mystery, a void filled with fragmented memories. Perhaps a sacrifice there wouldn't be so painful. But the mystics warned him the cost could be his sanity, his very identity. Fueled by a desperate camaraderie, they agreed. The ritual was a harrowing process, a dance with the very essence of darkness. As Ethan chanted the ancient words, the air crackled with a malevolent energy. Images flickered in his mind, a glimpse of a life he couldn't recall, a childhood bathed in warmth and laughter. With a guttural scream, he ripped that memory from his grasp, severing the tether that bound them to the entity. The chamber trembled, the walls groaning under the strain. The friends held on to each other, their combined strength anchoring the ritual. Finally, with a deafening boom, the air cleared. Silence descended, thick and heavy. Exhausted but exhilarated, they stumbled out of the cavern. The whispers were gone, replaced by a blissful quiet. Yet, a part of them was missing, a phantom limb aching in the void. Ethan looked distant, his eyes clouded with an unknowable emptiness. They returned to the cabin, a place now forever marked by their ordeal. The experience had forged an unbreakable bond between them, a shared secret that transcended words. Yet, a shadow lingered. They were forever marked by the darkness, a constant reminder of the price they had paid. Years passed. They built their lives, the whispers remaining a distant memory. But one night, on the anniversary of their encounter, they received a chilling message, a cryptic symbol scrawled on a postcard. The location, Blackwood Forest. A cold dread gripped them. Was the entity truly vanquished, or had it merely bided its time? They knew what they had to do. With a heavy sense of duty and a flicker of fear, they returned to the Blackwood Forest, ready to face the darkness once more, this time prepared to pay the ultimate price.